Are you finally planning on getting employees back to the office? Well, companies may have to get creative and be flexible if they want to keep their people. A new survey shows 50% of professionals who are working from home will look for a new job if they're required to return full time. If you ask managers what they want, you get a very different answer. According to the study by Robert Half, two thirds want to return to the pre-pandemic model and see everyone back in the office all of the time. Only a quarter of employees feel the same way, with the vast majority wanting some combination of remote and hybrid options. In the past, it was the employer's prerogative where people worked. Few could have ever predicted the changes we've witnessed over the last two years, and the changes show no sign of stopping. Numbers were just released for February, and it seems the great resignation is alive and well, as nearly 4.5 million people quit their jobs. Private employers are not the only ones struggling with this. There is an argument on Capitol Hill with lawmakers demanding the EEOC bring back all of their 2,000 employees, but union workers are claiming they were, quote, blindsided by requirements to come back full time. To ease the transition, employers might want to start thinking about offering more flexible work hours, relaxing dress codes, and even reimbursing people for their commuting expenses. The California State Senate is considering a bill that would fix recent problems in getting background checks completed in their state. If you hire in California, you may have noticed a real slowdown when it comes to getting your reports completed. An appeals court decision last year resulted in some courts blocking access to dates of birth and driver's license information in county criminal records. This decision made it more difficult for screeners to confirm that a criminal record belongs to a particular job candidate. The original goal of the court case was to protect the privacy of those in the court system. Instead, it ended up hurting employers and those trying to get new jobs. Without access to those identifiers, individual job candidates are being delayed due to the additional time and effort it takes to complete the background screening process. It's essential for employers to know if the John Doe applying for the job is the same John Doe with the conviction record or not. The removal of access to this information not only hurts employers and job seekers, but it can keep people from getting approved for housing, contracts, and it's even causing problems for the federal government. California State Senator Stephen Bradford introduced Senate Bill 1262 in an effort to require state courts to provide access to the identifiers in court record searches. The Professional Background Screeners Association has been working together with the Consumer Data Industry Association on this effort, but lawmakers need to hear from employers who are affected by this. If you're a Sterling client and you would like to have your voice heard on this matter, Click the link below this video to connect with us. Employers need to get moving if they've been taking advantage of the Department of Homeland Security's temporary policy for List B documents. Throughout COVID, employers were allowed to accept expired driver's licenses and other forms of ID because getting things renewed was very difficult or at times downright impossible. Now that document issuing authorities are reopened across the country, employers will no longer be able to accept any expired documents. That temporary policy is coming to an end on May 1st, and it goes a step further than that. Employers also have to go back and correct all of those expired documents that were accepted during the pandemic. All Form I-9s need to be corrected by July 21st. And that's going to do it for us today. We'll see you back here next time.